This video will discuss the main pre-processing modeling challenges in NVH analysis and how to speed up model creation with OTA Compose. When one wants to numerically simulate the NVH model, the pre-processing stage will ensure that the goals of simulation are achieved, such as simulate real-world events with load cases that represent usage experience, solve strongly coupled problems in terms of fluid and structure, evaluate multiple designs to deliver a more assertive configuration for the prototyping and testing phase, and optimize the vehicle structure to reduce weight at the same time that the NVH standards are safely achieved. There are some pre-processing challenges to make sure that these goals are accomplished while project deadlines are met, which are automate load case setup to reduce manual work, use test outputs as simulation inputs, substitute subsystems to assess different configurations, drive optimization with user-defined responses via equations. And we are going to see how Compose can deliver solutions for these challenges. Let's start to discuss about the conversion of test data into solver format. Regarding test data, in most cases, it already comes in frequency domain to be used by the NVH CAE engineer so we can carry out frequency response analysis, which is the response of a structure to steady state oscillatory excitation, or random response analysis, which is the response of a structure to non-deterministic continuous excitation. From the solver side and solver format, each finite element method solver has its own way to define tabular functions to be used in a frequency-dependent analysis. The tables give information about the frequency range and each respective amplitude. Compose a seamless interface to various test data formats as input, such as DAC, RSP, and ASCII files, allows NVH CA engineers to directly include the processed input as load collectors in pre-processing stage without intermittent work. As an example, let's see some frequency-dependent tabular functions in OptiStruct, or as a structural and optimization solver. Table D1 is a card in OptiStruct to define a tabular function to generate frequency-dependent dynamic load and perform frequency response analysis. It is formatted like in this image, where the table identification number is declared, along with the pairs of points, X and Y respectively, and there is a tag to indicate the end of the table. And tab RND1 is a card to define PST as a tabular function of frequency to be used in random response analysis. The principle of each field is the same as it was explained for table D1. With an example, we will explain how to convert the frequency domain data into a tabular format understandable by the FEM solver. Based on the frequency domain signal, we must store it in a way that the FEM solver understands. The first step is to read the common delimited file that contains the spectrum. Then, store the frequency in one variable and the amplitude in another variable. Let's also plot the spectrum to see how it looks like. Considering table D1 for Alter OptiStruct, we must take into account the entries that match all eight columns and then the remaining ones in the final line. In order to build such table, first of all give the table identification number. Then, let's deal with all points that can be directly tabulated in eight columns. We get the first four frequencies and the first four amplitudes and concatenate them in a matrix. Then, let's format the points considering frequencies to be integer format and amplitudes to be float format with five decimal places. The next step is to concatenate the previous content and the new one of table D1 card, and this is done in a loop for multiple pairs of points. For the remaining points that do not fill 8 columns, the same strategy is done but with less columns, as many as it's left. Finally, a new file that may be imported in hypermesh is created in writing mode, 
filled with the formatted contents of table D1 and the file is closed. Let's run the script and see the outputs. The first one is the spectrum plot, frequency versus amplitude. The second one is the formatted solver card in a new file. If we open it, we see that it's formatted and this file can now be quickly imported in Hypermesh, as we're going to see now. In Hypermesh, we can import this file and it is successfully understood. We can see the table that has been created with Compose in the model browser as a load collector entity and we can check the data and all pairs of points. Based on the example that we just saw, we could replicate the same principles to automate the creation of multiple cards, thinking about scenarios like What if I have multiple PSD excitations? What if I have various road profiles and need to create PSDs beforehand for the FEM model? What if I have multiple configurations with different frequency response functions? The manual creation of multiple tables based on test data can be very cumbersome and time-consuming if no efficient tool is used. With Compose, we can read as many input files as necessary, define and generate PSDs, and create outputs understandable by the solver, either in a specific format like FEM for OptiStruct or a neutral one like CSV. Moving to the next topic, we will explain about optimization with user-defined functions. Sometimes it's necessary to expand optimization competences when our desired function is not available in OptiStruct. And for that, we may use DREST3, which is a card that identifies an external function to be called and defines the parameters to be transferred to that function. And there is a powerful bridge to enable functions created with Compose to be understood by the solver. The benefit is that we may drive optimization with user-defined responses via equations or scripts through external functions implemented in external files. In the pre-processing stage, we can create this card and fill it with our custom function. The entry load lib, written in the solver deck, defines the external files to be loaded into OptiStruct. The steps are fairly simple to use this bridge. First of all, place your OML script created with Compose in the same folder of the FEM solver deck. Secondly, give the OML file as an input for the library to be loaded in OptiStruct. Then, run the optimization. Let's see an example focused on the optimization of a squeak and rattle model with a user-defined function to identify the dynamic tolerance. When we place both files in the same folder, we can use load lib entry in OptiStruct referring to DRESP3 card and the script that was created. In the DRESP3 card, we refer to the function name that will drive the optimization. Then we run the analysis to get the optimized results. The motivation for this optimization comes from the scenario when we have more relative displacement than the gap, as we can see in this short video. The plot of time versus displacement shows the instant when it happens, with a red dashed line indicating the gap displacement. As the retro risk is sensitive to gap and tolerance between the components, we need to maximize the dynamic tolerance, which is the gap minus tolerance minus relative displacement. If we check what's in the script to understand how to apply a user-defined function in optimization, we see a list of outputs and inputs according to what DRS3 expects. We need to make sure that the Compose function has a syntax with both inputs and outputs, even if some of them are not applicable for the problem. There are a few comments to help the user to understand what is what. Regarding the inputs, we have IPRM with the type of input values, RPRM has input parameter values, and PRM with the number of parameters defined in DRESP3 card, IRESP, which tells how many RESP are passed back to OptiStruct, RESP with OptiStruct output values, DRESP 
used in OptiStruct sensitivity analysis to keep output values. In RASP, with the number of responses as defined on max RASP field in DRAS3 card, iSense, an indication whether sensitivities are requested in the code, and finally, UData, data as defined on USR data field in DRAS3 card, used to pass constants or other relevant information. In this simple example, we take all input parameter values and find the maximum among them in order to maximize the dynamic tolerance, which will be the OptiStruct output value. In Hypermesh, we verify that loadlib card is properly referring to the OML script that will drive the optimization. In case the correct results from OptiStruct are still not retrieved, let's say that responses are equal to zero, what might be happening is that the function in OML could have an issue related to script syntax. Compose may be launched standalone for troubleshooting in order to recreate the scenario from OptiStruct so the script can be debugged line by line to identify the problem. We can pass dummy parameters to this function and run the script to evaluate if there is any syntax issue. Please visit Alta Forum a place where users can interact, ask questions, exchange information, and post about model-based development.